I'm Andy Jeter, Vice President of Enrollment Management at Andrew College. With me today is Professor Chris Johnson, who's the head of our art program. So thank you for being with us today. Thanks for having me. All right. Listen, one thing that you notice when you drive into Cuthbert is you go around the town square, you notice two huge murals in Magnolia Alley. Now, I know you did those, but would a student in the art program maybe get a chance to do some mural stuff or learn about murals while they're here? For sure. Actually, Mag Magnolia Alley was uh, completed with me and an art student who graduated with uh, Associate of Arts in Visual Arts. Um, and students often will come to Andrew College because they want to get active in creating murals in communities. Um, right now, I have a student who is helping me in Alabama, in Opelika, Alabama, the Museum of East Alabama, create a mural in their downtown depicting the history of Opelika. So um, we have a number of other projects before the end of this semester that students will be creating. One will be um, on a historic building on our downtown square, um, on a historic building that used to be a department store. So it's gonna be unveiled at our arts festival, which is another cool thing that students can participate in Andrew, at Andrew is um, in the arts festival that we have every year. Okay. Now there are also shows and exhibitions throughout the year as well, or do students get a chance to exhibit their art if it's on the side of a wall? Definitely they do. Um, in fact, Andrew College has a lot of opportunities for students to get involved in exhibiting artwork, curating exhibitions. Um, like I mentioned, the Arts Festival is one of those opportunities, but at the end of every semester, students participate in a, um, a student art exhibition. So they get to come together as a group, curate an exhibition of their work they completed that semester, hang it, um, and then invite all of their uh, students and fellow faculty members to come in and view the exhibition. And that happens every semester. And that's a really valuable skill to have as, a, as an emerging artist, as a student artist, is learning how to kind of exhibit your work, put it out there, and then um, look at the community's response to it. And our art program has, um, moved downtown in many ways. We've uh, used a lot of the spaces that were vacant down, downtown to kind of um, house some of our art facilities. So students, um, you know, have more and more gallery spaces to exhibit their artwork and to produce uh, new interesting pieces with a variety of different materials. Okay. Now you mentioned facilities. Talk a little bit about the, the art facilities in Andrew. So whenever I started my mural painting um, endeavor, which is about five years ago, uh, the community really responded in a positive way. And one of the ways they responded was by gifting the college um, a number of buildings downtown on the square. Again, there was a lot of vacant um, real estate down there. So whenever the community saw the positive impact the college was making, they, um, you know, they wanted more of that to kind of what they said was bring the light, put the lights on back downtown. We have a ceramics facility downtown that is the style is kind of industrial minimalist which is um it's more kind of a, an open floor plan and there are a number of buildings that we've that we've done uh that we've done for visual arts down there ceramic studio is one of them we also have a sculpture studio which doubles as our theater set design studio so it's practically a wood shop sculptural spot um as i said we have a number of multifunctional spaces that we use as gallery spaces and spaces for events uh, that are art related. Well, speaking of students, what sort of students is a good fit for our program? I would say the students that are really interested in trying everything. The cool thing about Andrew College is that you can get as involved as you want to. There are a number of students that do creative work for the plays that are vis that's visual art based for theater program. There's a number of students that cross over between music and visual art. And in some colleges, Unless you're a major, it's difficult to get into an art exhibition, for instance. But here, um, it's more inclusive than exclusive, and you can really shape your experience here. As far as the students, um, we have a range of, of skill levels. We have students that have had um, art in their high school careers, throughout their high school careers. And we have some students that have never taken an art class past middle school. So um, with the small, relatively smaller class sizes that we have in studio art, I feel like there is room to grow if you need a little bit of extra attention. And there is, um, you know, the sky's the limit if you um, are comfortable and fluent with your craft and technique and you want to get on a wall and you want to be very public with your art making. There's opportunities for that, too. So 
I think that the greatest thing about Andrew College is the ability to shape your experience. So, what about scholarships? Scholarships. scholarships. Yeah, so um, students do not have to apply as an art major to get a scholarship. If they have interest in art, then they can, um, you know, contact me and we could talk about uh, ways to get supplemental funding through scholarships. Um, and a student would need to apply to the college, express an interest in art. We would talk, I would review, you know, it depends on student to student, but I would talk with the student and find, gauge their interest in, in the arts and then also talk with them about opportunities that we have. Um, and then based on that work and that interview type um, exchange, we would offer a scholarship at that point. Um, yeah. And you, again, you don't have to be majoring or concentrating in visual art to get that. We have a number of students who aren't even majors who um, are interested, express interest, and then they are very active and have been awarded scholarships. So the, it goes into that in, more inclusive than exclusive thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> And I have to, I have to ask this as a dad. What sort of careers are available for art majors? Great question. <laughs> um, well, I've got, I've got an art degree, and I teach art at a college. And then I also have, um, in the past five years, have made a really successful kind of endeavor into mural painting, and uh, that's been my experience with with major careers in art. However, I also sell portraits of of children, pets, people. I got um, asked to be a live painter for a museum exhibition. I constantly have to turn down work as an artist because of the opportunities. Um, so it's a little bit of an old old mindset that you can't really do anything with art. It's, it's, I always show my students how, how much people take the image and the visual for granted. We navigate websites and all these um, apps on our phone and layouts is such an important part to navigation and all those are visual um, visual methods to get to the end. So there are a number of things. I always tell students that, um, you know, they need to get as involved as possible. They need to pour their self into it and, um, you know, really find out what their interest is. And the sooner they find out that they can start working towards that goal. But as far as um, career opportunities, museums, um, docents, guided tours around historical um, towns. I did an, ex or not an exhibition, I did a talk in December about, um, about the history of stained glass in our area and churches. It went great with Christmas. It also is a thing that other communities saw and they want to come into. So that, that could be, an, that's kind of an untapped um, job right there. All <laughs> these, these towns are looking for ways that they can, um, you know, elevate their history and the people who are from there. And they are so happy when they find a mural painter or somebody who can communicate that because it's just such a need that a lot of people, I guess, in the past have discounted and said that there's no valid way you could make a living with that. Um, there is, there's tons of ways. And um, at Andrew, it prepares you for the second two years of your four-year college degree. And in that time, um, my experience is that most students have figured out what they want to do, where they want to transfer and have some kind of career educational um, goals that emerge that they can work towards. So um, what I think is we really prepare students for the next two years of that educational leg and give them, um, you know, a bright idea of, of what is out there, the possibilities that you can have with uh, art as a career. Okay. And in those first two years, what's, what sort of art classes are available? Yeah, so we provide um, the foundational courses for um, the first two years of a four-year art degree. So these are things with um, fundamentals of 2D design, you know, learning how color theory works and the elements and principles of design. And then we have a 3D foundational classes, which are the elements and principles of 3D design. We have um, a number of art history courses that give students kind of a cultural and historical arc of evolution of art. Um, we have basic drawing, intermediate drawing, and then recently we have been doing um, a number of outreach courses, especially for students that are wanting to get into public art and mural painting. We've had classes where they can actually go out into a community, meet with them, develop an image with them and me, and then um, kind of make their own project with a the community. They're kind of in an apprentice role, but after two years, a student can decide if, the, you know, if they want to go right into the workforce. And I think that's a cool thing about this 
this public art um, avenue that we've got is that students can, you know, get the skills necessary to really change communities and uh, revitalize communities through public art in their first couple of years here. So if you get a strong foundational um, concept of what art is and what art can do in these communities that, uh, you know, some of them time forgot, a little bit of paint goes a long way. And um, I've seen communities respond just so positively to my students coming out there and changing their world. It's like they have some superpower and uh, <laughs> it's um, just magical to see that happen, especially in a student who is at the beginning of their artistic career and you know the sky's the limit and the future's just got everything for them. So it's a really special place to kind of see bright minds kind of take off in, into the world of art. Well, cool. Well, Professor Chris Johnson, thank you for spending time with us today. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right.